This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. People are up in arms over the price of gasoline and diesel. And according to GasBuddy, the average price in the U.S. went up 66 cents a gallon last month. And for the first time ever, the national average topped $5 a gallon. But guess what? That's not the highest it's ever been. Not if you account for inflation. The record was set in 2008. When adjusted for inflation, the national average was $5.57 a gallon. And I would bet many of the people that haven't been paying attention to gas prices are EV owners. And here's an EV from a company that claims you could drive for months without charging. How? Well, this is the Lightyear Zero, an electric car fitted with solar panels that can add up to 70 kilometers or over 43 miles of range a day. That could work out to 11,000 kilometers, or about 6,800 miles of range provided every year alone with just solar power. Obviously, that's going to depend on where you live. But its very aerodynamic body also helps to extend the driving range. And when combined with its 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, it'll travel an estimated 625 kilometers, or 388 miles, based on the WLTP test cycle. And while it's powered by four in-wheel motors, the Lightyear Zero is not particularly fast. It'll do zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 10 seconds. It's taken six years to reach this point, but orders are now open and deliveries are scheduled for the fall. But are you ready for a shocker? Prices start at 250,000 euro or over $263,000. $263,000. EV battery production in China is soaring. According to the China Automotive Power Battery Industry Innovation Alliance, boy, that's a mouthful, battery output hit 35.6 gigawatt hours in May, up nearly 160% compared to a year ago and 22% higher than in April. Cattle is by far and away the leader accounting for 47% of China's capacity, well ahead of BYD at 22%. At the same time, the number of EV charging stations in China is also exploding. According to the China Electric Vehicle Charging Infrastructure Promotion Alliance, also another mouthful, so far this year, 963,000 charging outlets were built, up more than 400% compared to last year. There are now just under 3.6 million charging piles installed across China. A California startup called Enzinc has developed a lithium zinc battery that could replace the lead acid batteries in vehicles. In a full-size SUV, for example, the lead acid battery can weigh up to 30 kilos, or about 60 pounds. But Enzinc's battery is only 10 kilos, and it can last three times longer. Historically, zinc batteries don't last long. They have problems with dendrites, which cause them to fail after a few dozen cycles. But Enzinc figured out how to fix that. Michael Burrs, the CEO of Enzinc, explains how they did it. Typically, people use particles of zinc suspended in an electroconductive paste. And what happens is, uh, on discharge, the zinc converts to zinc oxide, which is an insulator. And over time, more and more of the zinc gets coated and doesn't reduce back to pure zinc. And as most of your you know, listeners will know, as you try and force more and more current through smaller and smaller pathways, you end up getting a higher resistance, which means you generate more dendrites really, really quickly. Uh, what the US Navy and we recognize that if you could make a three-dimensional structure out of it, not just a bunch of particles, but a three-dimensional sponge structure, just like the sponge on your kitchen sink, but at the micro scale, then that zinc oxide forms on just the outside surface of the sponge, but it leaves the inside pure zinc, which acts as a current collector. So you get no unimpeded flow of the current, therefore no dendrites, therefore a rechargeable battery. And one of the most impressive aspects of Enzing's battery is that it can be made in existing lead-acid battery factories with very little retooling. Its first target is to replace lead-acid batteries in vehicles, but it also sees electric scooters, three-wheelers, and urban EVs 
as natural markets for its lithium zinc battery. Michael Burrs was our guest on AutoLine After Hours, and you can learn more about NZINC by looking for the link to that show in today's transcript or in the description box below. There are a few key reasons to start a business in Michigan. First of all, it's the talent. Second, Michigan is wired for winning. Third, the ecosystem here is really focused on supporting businesses in the market. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. So did Tesla stop hiring new people or what? Last week, Elon Musk said he had a, quote, super bad feeling about a recession and said Tesla needed to cut its salaried workforce by 10 percent, but not in China. As of yesterday, Tesla said it was going to hold three hiring events this month there. But today, Reuters reports that Tesla is canceling those hiring events. It's still allowing applicants to submit resumes for 1,000 job openings via WeChat. But it is hard to figure out what's really going on with Tesla and hiring people. And speaking of Tesla, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, is one step closer to issuing a recall for autopilot. The agency said it's upgrading its investigation to an engineering analysis, which is required before issuing a recall. NHTSA began its investigation into autopilot last August because nearly a dozen Teslas crashed into stopped emergency vehicles while operating on the advanced driver assistance system. NHTSA says it's since identified six more crashes. It's also looking into whether the vehicles adequately make sure the driver is paying attention. Jidu, a Chinese robocar company, is backed by Geely and Baidu. And here's our first look at its first car, which they call the Robo-01. It features a giant panoramic roof for great viewing and front hinge doors that open wide for easy entry. There's no B-pillar either. Inside, you'll notice a stowable steering wheel yoke and a huge borderless screen that stretches across the entire instrument panel. The LiDAR units also stow away when it's not in autonomous mode. The Robo-01 uses 31 external sensors, including two LiDAR, 5 millimeter level wave radars, 12 ultrasonic radars, and 12 cameras. And it's all powered by NVIDIA's Orin X chips. Right now, the auto industry is focusing on the transition to electric vehicles, but Jidu says the next transition will be to autonomous vehicles, where artificial intelligence replaces human drivers. It's calling this transition Intelligent Car 3.0. And here's something for art fans. Stellantis has commissioned Dr. Hubert Massey, a renowned Detroit area fresco artist, to create the largest municipal art installation in Detroit's history. It will have something to do with the sound barrier and will be located outside of its Mac assembly plant in the city. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing. Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. We told you recently that Cadillac would unveil its new race car soon, and well, here it is. Called the Project GTP Hypercar, it will race in the LMDH category, which allows cars to run in both the WEC and IMSA racing series. Power comes from an all-new 5.5-liter dual overhead cam V8 and a hybrid system that's common to all the cars in the class. On-track testing starts this summer, and its first race is in January of next year. That's not a lot of time to prepare. And speaking of Cadillac, 
It has pretty much been teasing the V-Series Escalade, its first SUV to wear the badge, all year, and fully revealed it about a month ago. I just got back from the media drive for the vehicle, and while my impressions are embargoed for a little while longer, there is one thing I'd like to highlight. Obviously, with any V-Series vehicle, performance is key. So engineers went to great lengths to make sure the dual exhaust pipes were equal in length. That can smooth out engine operation, make tuning easier, and provide better torque. And since the driver's side exhaust crosses over to the passenger side and then back again, the passenger side exhaust had to be extended, which required a near loop-the-loop -loop in the piping. As you can see from these images, the exhaust coming from the engine on the right side is pretty normal until it reaches the support bracket for the transfer case, which is about even with the B-pillar. That's where it comes into this near 360 degree loop before making its way to the back of the vehicle. And that exhaust also helps the 682 horsepower supercharged 6.2 liter V8 sing a real pretty tune. And while that's all for today's show, and I hope you have a great weekend, we're going to leave you with this video of an Escalade V ripping across a bridge in Arizona with its exhaust echoing off the rock wall around and the water below. Thanks for tuning in. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details. And rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.